There are only two cemeteries in the U.S. where you can visit multiple prior United States presidents. One of these is Arlington National Cemetery, established in 1864. There you'll find the 27th president, William Howard Taft, as well as the 35th president, John Fitzgerald Kennedy. The second cemetery is Hollywood Cemetery in Richmond, Virginia, established in 1847. Here you'll find the 5th President, James Monroe, and the 10th President, John Tyler. And today, we're traveling to Richmond and want you to come along with us as we explore some rather fascinating facts and visit their grave sites. All right here on this edition of History and Relics. James Monroe was born April 28, 1758, in Westmoreland County, Virginia, to parents Spence and Elizabeth Monroe. James was one of five children, and his father was a relatively successful planter and slave owner who also practiced carpentry. James Monroe had a long and distinguished public career as a Revolutionary War soldier, diplomat, governor, senator, and cabinet official. On February 16, 1786, Monroe married Elizabeth Courtright in New York City. She was the daughter of Hannah Aspinwall Courtright and Lawrence Courtright, a wealthy trader and former British officer. Monroe met her while serving in the Continental Congress. The couple had three children, Eliza, James Spence, and Maria. Maria later married Samuel L. Governor on March 8, 1820, in the White House. She was the first child of a president to ever marry at the White House. Monroe was our fifth president of the United States and was the last president of the Virginia dynasty. Monroe's presidency began in 1817 and lasted two terms until 1825 and included what came to be called the Era of Good Feelings. One of his lasting achievements was the Monroe Doctrine, which became a major principle of U.S. foreign policy in the Western Hemisphere. Monroe was the last president to wear a powdered wig tied in a queue a tricorn hat, and knee breeches, according to the style of the late 18th century. That earned him the nickname, The Last Crooked Hat. He was also the last president who was not photographed. Following his retirement in 1825, Monroe was plagued by financial difficulties and died on July 4, 1831 in New York City, sharing a distinction with Presidents John Adams and Thomas Jefferson of dying on the anniversary of U.S. independence. John Tyler was born on March 29, 1790 to a slave-owning Virginia family. Like his future running mate, William Henry Harrison, Tyler hailed from Charles City County, Virginia and descended from the first families of Virginia. The Tyler family traced its lineage to English settlers in 17th century colonial Williamsburg. His father, John Tyler Sr., commonly known as Judge Tyler, was a friend and college roommate of Thomas Jefferson, who later became the nation's third president, and served in the Virginia House of Delegates alongside Benjamin Harrison V, William Henry's father. William Henry Harrison was an American military officer and politician who was nominated as one of several Whig Party nominees for president in the 1836 United States presidential election. He was defeated by Democratic Vice President Martin Van Buren. Four years later, the party nominated Harrison again 
with John Tyler as his running mate under the campaign slogan, Tip a Canoe and Tyler Too. Harrison defeated Van Buren in the 1840 presidential election, becoming the ninth president of the United States. Harrison died just 31 days after his inauguration as president in 1841, making his presidency the shortest in U.S. history. Harrison was the last president born as a British subject in the 13 colonies and was the paternal grandfather of Benjamin Harrison, who would later become the 23rd president of the United States. Harrison was also the first U.S. president to die while in office, causing a brief constitutional crisis since presidential succession was not fully defined in the United States Constitution. However, succession in such circumstances would be defined and John Tyler would become the first vice president to succeed to the presidency after Harrison's passing. While Tyler became president in 1841, he did not appoint a vice president. The Constitution did not provide a means for replacing a vice president who had died, resigned, or become president. Until 1967, vacancies in the vice presidency were left open until the next election. From 1789 to 1967, 16 different vacancies occurred, spanning a total of over 37 years. In 1967, following the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, the states ratified the 25th Amendment, which formally clarified the process of presidential succession. The amendment allowed the president to nominate a new vice president if that office became vacant. Tyler and his first wife, Letitia Christian, married on March 29, 1813. The couple had nine children. Letitia died on September 10, 1842, of a stroke, becoming the first First Lady to die in the White House. President Tyler later married Julia Gardner on June 26, 1844, in a private ceremony at a New York City Episcopal Church. It was the first time a president had wed while in office, and two days later, the Tylers held a reception in the Blue Room of the White House to introduce the country to its new First Lady. Tyler and Julia had seven children while married, and with he and Letitia's other nine children, that's 16 in all, leaving Tyler fathering more children than any other American president in history. Tyler later died on January 18, 1862, at the age of 71, due to a multitude of health conditions. Tyler's death was the only one in presidential history not to be officially recognized in Washington because of his allegiance to the Confederate States of America. Tyler had requested a simple burial, but Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who served as the first and only president of the Confederate States of America from 1861 to 1865, planned a much grander funeral. Fittingly, at his funeral, the coffin of the 10th president was draped with a Confederate flag. He remains the only U.S. president ever laid to rest under a flag not of the United States. As of May 2023, Tyler has one living grandson through his son Lion Gardner Tyler, making him the earliest former president with a living grandchild. Harrison Ruffin Tyler was born in 1928 and maintains the family home, Sherwood Forest Plantation in Charles City County, Virginia. We mentioned earlier about Confederate President Jefferson Davis, who served as the first and only president of the Confederate States of America from 1861 to 1865, and who made special funeral arrangements for President John Tyler. Well, when Davis died on December 6, 1889, his funeral and burial in New Orleans were one of the largest in the South. An executive committee decided to emphasize Davis's ties to the United States, so an American flag was placed over the Confederate flag during the viewing, with many crossed American and Confederate flags in view nearby. However, in 1893, Davis was reinterred here in Richmond, Virginia, at Hollywood Cemetery, per his wife Verena's request.
Thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed our program. If you like our content, we ask that you give us a thumbs up, a like, share with your friends, subscribe to our channel, and ring that notification bell so you always know when our new content is published. And all of this costs nothing but means a lot to us and keeps us growing. You may also leave us a tip if you choose. The address is provided here on your screen, and a link is provided in the description area below. So until next time, everyone, this one is history.